members um, share the RGA from the top of Stratford. And I um, want to thank you for your uh, time this afternoon, the time that you put in for your RFP. And I'd like to just go, we just sort of just did this, we'll go around the table, introduce ourselves, and then if you would do the same. And then, um, as you know, you've got 20 minutes for the interview, and then we'll be a q and after that. So, all right. I'm Ryan Ehrenhaus. I'm the chair of the Stratford Historic District Commission, as well as a resident of the Historic District. I'm Patrick Carlton. I'm with the Connecticut Metropolitan Council of Governments. We're the regional planning agency for the Greater Bridgeport region, which includes the town of Stratford. Uh, Jamie Miller, chairman of the Architectural Review Board, the town of Stratford. Mary Dean, economic development director for the town of Stratford. Hi, I'm Assistant Regional Director, the town planner for the town of Stratford. Mark Romano. I'm Joe Kuzik, I'm Team Romano's lawyer. Uh, Ray Sullivan with the Sullivan Architecture Group. I'm Ted Hart, Special Engineer with uh, SLR Consulting. Do you want to start? Just what? Just consulting on what? In what discipline? Engineering. Okay. Special Engineering. Structural? Um, no, I'm not structural. Site Engineering. Oh, site. Oh, so, okay, thank you. Can we get started? Yeah. Yep, please. Okay. And once again, my name is Joe Kubik, and I'm a lawyer for Mark Romano. Uh, my offices are in Milford, Connecticut, the law firm of Harlow Avenue in Cleveland. And we, um, we are excited to be here. Um, we, and I think our presentation has shown that we're taking this seriously. Um, I think the quality of the plans are, these guys do a great job with the plans. Um, and I mean these guys, the architects and the engineers. Uh, so you can see a lot of effort and thought has been put into this. Uh, Mark Romano, of course, and partner will be the chief developer. Um, and we've got uh, John Malone and Ted Hart, formerly of Malone and McBru McBru, now SLL, SLR International, and as the engineering and site, site, uh, site work folks, the, uh, the, 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 the engineering side of it. Ray Sullivan from Sullivan Architectural Group out of Milford, and myself. Um, I think we all bring a great deal of experience to the table. I think you can <coughs> just look at some of the projects that uh, these folks have worked on in the past. It's something that they've done before and will continue to do and have been very successful with it. Um, and they will be on this project, with this project, throughout the development. So we've got experts that will be part of this project until we complete it and get those COs that we're gonna certainly want, certainly need. Um, so uh, the vision for the project, our, our experts, Mark, and others that have worked on this and preparing for this have shown a consideration for the architecture in the area, given consideration to the historic value of the area, and of course we make note that that building design is kind of feeding off the, the Congregational Church, which is just a classic building in the town of Stratford. Um, we're giving consideration to the transit issues, of course you got the train station, which is a driving force, but also the, the, uh, the bus line that runs right, right past that property essentially. Um, I think we're showing respect for the neighborhood and the, and the residential nature of the neighborhood. Um, certainly by providing, and Ray will talk about this a little bit, about the townhouse shielding, parking in the back, so that it, it the, the impact on that neighborhood should be limited uh, given the driveway access in different locations. Uh, we're pro pro proposing passive park, which uh, the property owner will maintain and take care of. And it's not just for the residents, but it's for the, for the neighborhood. Um, I think we're showing support and consideration for the commercial uh, business, the commercial uses that are adjacent to this property. Um, we've been given consideration to the traffic flow, um, trying to ease the ease traffic away from Sutton Avenue, which currently is a lot of, technically to get out of that commercial parking lot, you're supposed to go up that rare one-way road up to the <coughs> circle at Sutton and then all the way out. Uh, it, it, it's just not a, a very well, it's not, a, it's not really a, a good uh, a exit flow there. So we're trying to ease that impact, and we believe that we're gonna have minimal impact on town resources with this project. We're not talking about having garbage pickup because we're gonna do it all internally, snow removal, grass cutting, and so forth. So again, expenses are gonna be de minimis, except of course, there's always the impossibility for students. Um, our estimates based on similar projects have shown that maybe you know, on average, there might be about 13 kids in the school system um, and there are other expenses will be incidental, lease and fire and, and whatnot that might have to service that property. We estimate that um, our project will bring in uh, annually about, given current, current rates, uh, about $950,000 a year. Um, that doesn't include motor vehicle um, and personal property that would get generated. So this property becomes, as soon as it's uh, com completed, a, a 
really good tax revenue flow for the for the town. Um, our purchase price, and I, I think um, we noticed that we were higher than all everyone else, but we're, we're sticking to that number. We believe that this project is, is a very good project, and we believe that we can easily work with those numbers, given what has to be done. Um, so in the, immediately upon closing, there's going to be a, a, an injection of revenue into the town as well. Um, we intend to have public sessions. I've conducted many myself in my career, and these guys are all very experienced in talking to the public, going to zoning hearings and so forth, public hearings. We intend public sessions before uh, going to the, the zoning commission. Uh, we would tend to maybe, hopefully, at on site, and then maybe in the, in the Stratford Library as an example for meeting places, certainly in the neighborhood. Um, uh, we intend to present to the town council, and uh, we have experience there as well as conduct and presenting to the Zoning Commission uh, public hearings. We have a great deal of experience there as well. So we think that our team, we believe our team is got all the bells and whistles to get this thing done. And we, we really greatly consider your appreciation. And I'd like to turn this over now. Oh, well, first gonna go to Mark, then to Ray, and then Ted's here to back uh, clean up. So Mark, why don't you go ahead. My name is Mark Romano. Um, I live in Shelton right now. But I was born and raised here in Stratford. Graduated Stratford High in 1987. I have a lot of family in town. My mom still works for Public Works Department right now. So I, I have a vet, vet, vested interest to do a good job on this. And thank you all for having us. Um, when, when I heard this was coming up for bid, again, I, I assembled these guys. I said, well, I want this property. I want to build it. I want something nice in town. And we came up with what we think is the highest and best use for the property. The most revenue for the town. Uh, I think this design will be a shot in the arm for the business and the residents. It's right downtown, all the little restaurants and bars. Um, I have a partner that will uh, financially back me, James Blakeman out of Shelton, which I don't know if you're familiar with, he owns quite a bit of commercial space on Bridgeport Ave in Shelton. Um, but this, what we came up with, I just love the design. And I hope you like what Ray has to say. I just want to mention that uh, Jim Blakeman's family was one of the original families in Stratford, settling families, and that family went to the Congregational Church, you know, okay, yeah. well, forever. And that's, that's, right. that's their church, and they yeah. they were there. So it, it kind of ties in nice, and I think maybe that's one of the reasons why Mr. Blakeman was kind of excited about the project too. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ray Sullivan. <coughs> Real meeting with real people in so long. <laughs> um, real. <laughs> uh, you know, if, thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Ray Sullivan, so Sullivan Architectural Group. Um, you know, my practice was in Newark for a number of years, moved up to Fairfield, now in Newark, in Newark for Green. Um, you know, from this corner location, you know, the first house I ever bought was about 150 yards away from here. It was a 904 uh, East Broadway on the corner of. Sutton and East Broadway, Doc Kudak used to live there. Next to him is an authentic salt box built in 1761. I bought that. I renovated it. You know, took all the finishes off. You know, took all the volcanoes and timbers. And, um, get married there. Had three children there. And we just got too big for the house. But, uh, you know, built plenty of family in, uh, you know, in, in, in Stratford. So, uh, I, I was cognizant of the historic character of the neighborhood. You know, it's a great walkable neighborhood. Um, you know, and, and, you know, having experienced that that myself, when I can take the kids down to, uh, you know, you know, the playground behind Sterling, or, or, or you know, I don't know how many Matchbox toys I brought my sons out of the. the we used to be in the deli and eat them. Um, so we, you know, we're sensitive to design. So so the, you know, the first thing we wanted to do, you know, we wanted to provide an attractive front to this project facing Sutton because we realized there's all these you know, you know residential homes there and beyond there and so you know we were really worked hard on, on presenting what we think is an attractive aesthetically pleasing lower scale solution on Sutton which which are the you know sketches of these townhouses um, So I think that that gives a good depiction of the the, the opening of the townhouses, what we pr propose as a park, and the, the multi-family you know behind. 
Um, so one of the offsets of providing the townhouses is that we used up land area on Sutton, uh, and therefore there was less land area for you know kind of a larger multifamily. And what we wanted to just talk to you about was um, the RFP had um, you know kind of suggested minimal parking, surplus parking, and um, so because we used up. Uh, land area on Sutton with the townhouses and the park, um, the building footprint for the multifamily became smaller, and <coughs> so that the land area underneath that footprint for, for underground parking was smaller. So, you know, we, we needed some surface parking. So, but we think that's a good blend between um, providing minimal parking, um, but, but, you know, it, rather than a bigger building, I, you know, I'd rather have the lower scale along Sutton rather you know use the park which the park is going to be available to local residents uh neighborhood residents and both the townhouses and the park i think whatever uh surface parking we have you know does more than a good job of shielding that park so we think that's a good trade-off um as far as architectural you know character joe mentioned that uh, you know the you know one of the main themes was the first congregational church and and you know, you know, we've got that, you know, you know, theme here. Um, you know, funny the Sterling House has has some nice um, bays with hip roofs on it, um, and I tried to introduce that, but there's only 27 townhouses in two buildings, uh, and given the historical, you know, nature of the uh, neighborhood, you know, we always have these, we also have these very, very traditional, uh, you know, colonial theme that that introducing a third one, it just got too busy. So, so we wanted to keep it simple. We thought, you know, simpler was a little bit better, you know, in the, in the long run as well. Um, and, and I had previously mentioned that, that, you know, this park is going in, um, Mark's gonna maintain the park, and the park will be, you know, available to the, uh, to the neighborhood. So I'm gonna flip the other side, actually. <coughs> in his office put this site plan together. So we see the two townhouse buildings, we see the multifamily, 95 and the train station, you know, on the other side of that. So here's East Broadway. Actually, that was the house. Um, and, and this becomes, you know, the, the main entrance, you know, into the facility. So for pedestrian access, you know, <clears throat> pedestrian access, you can walk out the door, you know, we've got a surface walkway out to Sutton, you can go out and walk around to the train station. Um, you know, if you, you know, didn't want to go on that, that, that sidewalk surface, you know, you can walk across the parking lot, get a little quicker, but you'd be in traffic. Um, another route to the train station is if you come out the back, you go down the access way, that's actually the, you know, the, you know, the shortest route to the train station. Um, we're showing a curb cut and access to the adjoining properties. So we're suggesting that because we think it would be good planning. Uh, it's not, uh, it, it has no bearing on the project. Project works 100% either way, but we just think overall it would be good, good for the overall town planning. And, and so it's another possible route for residents to walk the train station is come, you know, go, go down, go down those steps and cut across the parking lot. Um, the vehicular traffic, we've got main, <laughs> two-way traffic in from East Broadway uh, and and that surface parking you know will exit off the access way and around on Sutton um, you can come in you go down a ramp you get down underneath the building and so we've got parking you know underneath the building and then there's an access way that brings you up we've got a, we've got a slope up out of that and then and then you're gonna take the same route all the way around um, so uh, again, on this curb cut issue, um, again, it's 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 the, the project does not depend on it. But but because if you're in the in the shopping center and you and, and you've got to exit that and then come around this way, you know you, you're throwing a lot of traffic on Sutton. And you know if if we could get this to work, um, you know they, actually we, we would allow that traffic to come up out. And out more quickly that way, and actually keep them 100% off of something. Uh, so you know that's just a uh, 
it's just a thought. Again, we think it's good planning. Um, there's been some minor conversations, but there, you know, there's, there's clearly no deal in place, uh, nor, uh, nor is it really necessary to our project. Excuse me, minor conversations with the owner during the curb cut would be? Is that? There's, there's okay. been some minor conversations, yes. Okay. So, so, so that's the, you know, I, I know we want to keep this short. So, you know, so that's the theory behind the, you know, the layout, the architectural design. You know, I, you know, I think you've got in the pamphlet how many units there are and how many studios, ones and twos, you know, how many bedrooms, you know, I'll happily run through that, but, you know, uh, if, if you'd like me to, but I, I think everybody has it in front of them. So also the Board of Ed parking? Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, so that, that Board of Ed parking is being maintained, you know, in this area right here in the surface, and then we do have some spaces down here too, so that when we, when, when, the, when a solution to, the, to, to, to this project um, is confirmed, you know, it, it, it may be possible to provide, you know, the, the 20 or even more than 20 and have, have a different access route to it as well, maybe some lower area parking. So, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure there's anything on the civil side on this we wanna, you know, you know review right now. Uh, you know, we are, are cognizant of the uh, of the floodplain. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, the, the, the Ted Hart, the, the floodplain comes up to the westerly borderline, but is not on the site. It's elevation 13. And so when we do our design, we're going to make sure that the entrances to the underground parking are above elevation 13. And what about the, the, the level below, uh, two, two level parking or section like things that are missing? Um, I haven't looked at that. Given the flood, given the flooding, I won't say this is probably a good idea. I think it's too big for this one level. In in the packet, you know, so we, we did touch upon how much surface parking, the subsurface parking there is uh, in our packet. And I've got it here if you want to turn to it. You know, we provide a layout for the parking that's below the building. We provide an alternate layout. You know, if the area that is subsurface parking now, we want to excavate that out, provide more subsurface parking, and then and then pave over it. You know, it, it's a kind of an expensive solution, and I think the solution we have now has more than enough parking, has good circulation, and, and again, between the townhouses and the park, I think we provide a good shield to the, uh, any surface parking that exists from the, you know, from the neighborhood. And it's only a quarter mile walk to the train station, so it's uh, Having done many, many, many multifamilies and many TODs, uh, this, this site is ideal. But you know, you just it, today it's hard to find a site that that is actually flat, and it's you know it's, it's close to shopping, it's close to the train station, it's close to the highways. You know, it's really ideal. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so um, uh, Ray touched on underground parking. Certainly, we can entertain additional underground parking. We think it isn't really a practical solution given the solution that's laid out here. Um, uh, but we'd be happy to talk about that, but that would have an impact on the purchase price because it's, it's an expensive solution. The other um, item is the affordability. We mentioned it briefly in our, in our document. I don't think any of the proposals um, provided for affordable housing. We'd be happy to talk about that too, but again, that would have an impact on the purchase price because obviously affordable takes away from future, future revenues. Um, and... Um, <clears throat> It's intended that there be no cost to the town, including the town, uh, the board of ed parking, uh, snow removal would be and paving and so forth will be on the property owner to, to maintain. So again, uh, very low cost, we believe, to the town um, um, it, with great benefits, great benefits for the town and, uh, and, downtown. And, the, and, and the businesses downtown. So again, with that, we'd uh, appreciate your consideration. We really would like this project. We think we can hit it out of the park. Thank you. Do you want to leave it off? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, how would you describe the demographic of your target market? Uh, are you looking to young professionals, uh, you know, older people trying to age in place, things like that? Maybe speak to that. I would think the, the for this it would be more of a younger professional. Uh, will they want the train to Stanford, Norwalk, even not even New York? We don't really see families, couples, professional couples. Have you done any investigation? I can expand 
that led you to that? Or what, so how are you arriving at that as being the target? Well, it's the basically the TOD district are gonna get commuters. They're gonna take advantage of the train. Not too many retirees wanna retire next to access to a train station. We, we found. Yeah, there's not gonna be any, any prohibition for someone who's retired and wants to live in the studio. Well, it's gonna be open to everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we envision a younger, you know, maybe married couple with, with, with maybe a couple small kids as their starter place before they, they move on to the backyard and the swing set kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so can you talk a little about the amenities your project offers, and it's kind of twofold, I guess. One is the amenities to the people who live there, and you know, whether that's in common space, whether it's, you know, whatever that might be within the buildings, but then also um, amenities, and I, obviously the, the park would be the same as for the public, but any other amenities that you'd be offering that might be open to the greater community and the neighborhoods surrounding that. For the residents, you know, you know, in the building, you know, we'll have a you know recreation area. So, so generally, you know, there's quiet and active recreation. You know, there might be a fireplace, sitting areas. You know, someplace we can sit quietly. You know, we might be watching TV. Then there's there's busier sections. Generally, a kitchen in that area. Um, the other thing that's important is a business center because you know uh, even before the pandemic, uh, you know, if you're in a one bedroom apartment, a lot of times you want to get out of the apartment. So if you can get down to that area, work from home, whether it's one day or three days a week, uh, we provide you know work, you know some smaller workstations, some small offices, and some small conference rooms, so that you can actually you know you know have a meeting if you wanted to. But but the you know the business side of that is important. So so it's kind of like this we work area, but but so so there is a business center. Uh, there's a there's a fitness center, um, and uh, you know we typically put that in every project, and this one's a good size. Um, we have an outdoor enclosed terrace in, in the rear because there will be kind of evening activities, and we thought that was the best place to put it because it's, we, you know, we've got it off the um, amenity areas, and it's also shielded from the residents, so we've got this four-story building, that, you know, so that there are outdoor activities. Um, so, you know, you mentioned the park. Um, so. One, one thing we find is that when you do get a multifamily in a, uh, a downtown area, uh, the, the, it's, it's really, we, we like to take advantage of the downtown, but you can, you can walk to so many things from here, walk to so many restaurants, and we don't wanna discourage them or provide more things, um, you know, and we're even open to, to you know, talking to you know, uh, area businesses. If there was a fitness center nearby that said, hey, you, gee, you know, you know, I could give you uh, 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 you know, some access to membership, you know, if, you know, if you scaled yours down, we'd be happy to talk about that. But, but I, I think it's important to, you know, use the, the, the you know, the immediate local area, you know, and, uh, and so I think we have good amenities within the building, and I think actually Stratford's providing good amenities, you know, outside the building. Okay, thank you. Can you explain that a little bit? Um, what about, like, the territoriality, right? So, I'm thinking if you're living in an apartment complex and then all of a sudden outside people are coming into your park, how do you, how do you, how, how have you sort of combated that and maybe your other projects, Mark, if, if you've had to at all? Well, when you say combat. Well, so, you know, people come maybe into my apartment complex. It's not my apartment complex anymore. It's, it's everybody's apartment. Well, it's, it's a park. It's a public park. Right. I mean, you can't right. really. I'm sure if you're after hours having a keg party, we can do something about that. Right. I don't see that happening. And you don't see a conflict in the use of the, you know, people in the apartment building having a park to go to that might get overcrowded by people outside the park coming in to use their park. You know, I, I don't. I, I know. I understand what you're saying. I, we don't foresee that as a problem. Okay. Right. Well, the nature of Sutton in and of itself on that one side is, is single family, well, actually, it's a multi family single that have substantial yards of their own anyway. So I, I don't see a big spillover. I don't think people away from coming, coming. I don't see people coming to this park 
that are on Sutton um, or, are, or, 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 or not in, living in the building. So I, we don't, I don't, can't envision any kind of overflow or crowding there. It's just a, an amenity that we thought was a nice uh, green space to and buffer mm -hmm. from the main building. Just lots of different ways you could have approached the design and layout. I'm curious what, what, what can you can walk through the inspiration or what, what sort of led you, drove you towards the design and the approach that you've taken? Well, uh, you know, you know, again, I, I think that it was really important. I mean, this is such an ideal site for a multifamily. Um, and, you know, we do these four story floating buildings all day long in all these different towns. But, but in this particular location, you know, we really wanted to be sensitive of what was across the street. So, so that's where the, the lower scale townhouse came into play. And, you know, we wanted to give, um, we, we wanted to tie that down, you know, into uh, the local neighborhood. We, you know, we didn't want to just take a contemporary design or, or, or design that had nice lines and shapes, you know, but wasn't rooted in Stratford. That's why, you know, you know we went to the kind of the shapes um, and accents that the first congregation church had, and we tried to bring in Sterling House and, and, and a couple of the others. And, and probably over time, more of that would happen as you as, as you develop that more. Um, the So we just had some sketches in the back, but 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 again, ne next to that that theme that that is more like the first congregation, you know, church is is is, is the, the traditional colonial and and although there's many different styles around, you know, that you know there are these and it's, it's actually one right out in front and and so and, and again, we tried others, but it, it got to be too busy. So so once we developed what we thought were good lines, we wanted to make sure those lines could transfer, you know, into the multifamily. So the multifamily is four stories, so that's, that's a different animal. Uh, but it is set back, you know, it's mostly, uh, you know, visible from the <coughs> parking lot from the, from the rear. Uh, <coughs> if you're walking on Sutton, it's gonna be pretty hard to see over the town, townhouses, you know, and, and, and actually see that building, building behind. <coughs> but that, that, that building behind will have, um, you know, similar proportions. Um, it'll, it'll undulate a little bit because every unit's gonna have its own deck you know, so there'll be a lot of ins and outs. Uh, we've got roof activity, you know, we've got gables, we've got dormers, which we really don't need, but that's that's really, you know, part of the design to tie it into the front townhouses, which we're hoping to root in the community. Yeah. Thank you. So I have a question for you. Um, based on what the students or the market research, have you arrived at the number and the size of um, the development, number of units and size of development? Well, we were we we based on what we what was allowable in that T O D district. T O D designation, okay. Um, also, um, have you considered? I mean, you, you did mention that you're open for having some new districted housings there, uh, which will help with the town's A dash twenty G goals. Um, but you also mentioned there will be a significant impact to the purchase price. Have you estimated that? No, we would want to first find out how many units you would like affordable, and then we would back into it with factor maintenance and what have you. And whether it's going to be a thirty percent or fifteen, you know, you know, how how much affordable? I'm very experienced in affordable. We just finished a fifty unit in Hamden that is seventy percent affordable, but it did drastically affect the taxes we pay and, and our so design. You're seeking the factor maintenance and not. Um, it could it'd be both. It would, we, we, we work together to find out what we would want, how many percent you would want affordable and work back and forth. Thank you. You mentioned that you uh, zoning wise helped you create the density. However, the density requirements, I believe, would allow you to have a lot more units than you have. Are you, this is only 142, if I remember. You have 142 units? It's based on bedrooms. I think it's based on bedrooms. Yeah. Okay. So maybe another. But it still seems light to you, is it? Well, so so I, 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 it is a little bit light, but I, I, I think it's uh, you know I think it's light. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna we have yeah we we have 178 bedrooms. Yeah. You know, so I I, I think that uh, the number in my head was like 190. Yeah. And then it depended on whether or not the it was four four acres or 4.3 or you know whatever you know, but it was approximately that. So. Um, so, so, 
So we shot approximately for that number. Uh, and then when we introduced the townhomes, it, it took up a lot of, a lot of the property. Mm -hmm. uh, so can we squeeze a little bit more out of the multifamily? Could we make it wider? Could we have another wing off of that? I suppose we could do something, but we, we were comfortable with the design and we we're comfortable that 178 was getting pretty close to the max of ours. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if, you know, going back to what you mentioned before, Gary, on the roof, if you were to <clears throat> you know, use the roof lines and sneak units, you know, maybe those were efficiencies up on the top floor or something. Get, get another floor, but not have it look like another floor. Yeah. Get more well, what, what, one, one thing we could do, because sometimes, sometimes what we'll do is on the upper floor, you know, may, maybe what's what below is a two bedroom, becomes two one bedrooms right. that has a, you know, that has a, a like it becomes a duplex unit. Right. What, what, we, what we would like to avoid is five stories, because five stories gonna kick it from 5A construction to 3A construction. And that means the, you know, the entire exterior of the building would be uh, by return trees. Wouldn't make much sense. But, but you know, so we, you know, if, if, uh, you know, we could probably massage the plan a little bit and get, go from 178, and I'm sure we're gonna get all the way up to 190. You know, we you know we had thought about three bedroom townhouses, but but we thought those were getting too big, and it was a different product. Mm -hmm. uh, but but if it, if we work on the plan a little bit, we could probably increase the bedroom count a little bit. Mm -hmm. If some of that park became below, we would send out a surface for those yes. apartments. Yeah. Or something. We, we, we we were sensitive to not build too big a building. Yeah. In, I, in three I totally appreciate it. Totally, totally get it. Just density. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Mark, this is probably for you, I think, but um, maybe you could speak about a recent project that is, you feel is most similar to this, in, in, in a couple areas maybe, and there may, maybe there is more than one, but both in, in scale of project, a TOD project perhaps, uh, you know, just uh, you know, located near a town center, so maybe you can just pick on one or two projects specifically that that would compare to this? It compares to what you're well, planning we, we we used uh, the old Keating Ford site there. Uh, it was Forest, Forest Center, Forest Center. Forest Center <clears throat> for comps and, and that idea. But as far as a TOD, Ray, you probably would speak better. This would be my first building in a TOD because they're not, they're not. Right, right. They're well, put well, aside the TOD, but just, a, you know, a, a similar sized Kind of apartment complex with these kind of amenities this kind you know it doesn't necessarily have to be a any one of the avalon buildings i would say ray yeah, yeah. oh yeah so uh, you know from, from our side we've done multiple avalons multiple but you know we've got three projects in long island right now for mill creek which used to be trimble Crow residential because they're they're larger than that one and uh, you know one's in, in glen cove is 275 and Oceanside is 250 in Westbury, which is right on the railroad tracks. Uh, all these projects are in Long Island. It's, you know, it's another 200 plus. But um, the you know you know you know it, you know we we just finished uh, you know a couple hundred units in Wallingford. Wallingford you know didn't have a lot of train stops. You know, but they 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 built a brand new train station. Now they have a lot more train stops. And so whether or not you have Wallingford or whether or not you have uh, some of these other sites, you know, um, you know, we've done all walkable projects in New Rochelle, Port Chester, um, Maranac, you know, a bunch of the towns along the way. Um, you know, the, you know, the key is if you're in an urban center, you know, you know, you, you want to take advantage of all that walkability um, and make it as convenient for the residents as possible and give them, you know, as much amenity, you know, inside as possible. A lot of times we, we do flat roofs and they get rooftop decks. You know, we have that in New Rochelle right now. That's walking distance from the train station. Um, if, when you get to a, some of a little bit more suburban towns, I think we can spread it out like we just did in Wallingford. We actually made a campus, you know, out of multiple buildings that have beautiful old masonry building on, on the site already so that, you know, there you've got more amenity, you know, site um, so I, I think you, you you take advantage of, of where you are so uh, right. this, this is unique to strap even though it's similar to other buildings this design and concept is unique to the site really the, the shielding of the neighborhood with the townhouse really kind of <clears throat> drove the, you know the, you know, the, the project okay thank you we just go back to the parking so what was the 
ratio of the parking to the building height code of your parking requirements? And what are they allocated, allocation wise? Yeah. So what, what we have, so the parking required is 151, we're providing 176, uh, and that does not include the board of air space. You mean based on the TOD? Yes, it's based on the TOD. So 176, and then, then the, so the other BO, the 20 for BOE is not in part it's, of that? It's not part of that 176. Is that like one, one space per bedroom? So you're on 178 bedrooms? So that, so on, I think on the, on the TOD right, if I recall from my head, I think it's one per unit, and, then, per per, per, and, then, and then we add another percentage for every additional bedroom. But Water the, for efficiency, 1.25 for one bedroom, uh, and it increases for every single bedroom. Yes, mm -hmm. um, but the, uh, and, and then the, you know, I think the RFP also requested a certain percentage as high as 70%. So it kept the parking requirement down to be pretty low. Mm -hmm. So no particular allocation, and we're finding, I guess, that um, maybe we weren't quite clear, but the uh, Board of Education staff was able to park. And the suggestion in your RFP mm -hmm. was that the underground parking would be um, for residents, BOE staff, and then whatever's left over for the municipalities. Are we taking the BOE staff into account for parking at all? So when, when you pull, pull it off the main drive, Board of, Board of Ed has their own parking lot right here. Right. So we kept that. We kept that separate. Um, you know there. there there are potentially some more spaces you know, available down this way as well. Um, the uh, again, you know, part, part of what happened was that as we took all this land area, uh, you know, for the townhouses, it left this smaller. So there's there's fewer spaces below. But but you know, I think we've got good flow. I think we've got good service parking. We can we provided the requirement for the you know board of ed you know at the surface rather than you know having a park in the garage then. Figure out how to, you know, how to yeah, and that's where I think some of the confusion has been happening is um, that the 20 was earmarked for strictly visitors because the, you know, I'm talking to the BOE and the mayor. <clears throat> so, you know, any 20 that have to have immediate access back and forth to the building, and then the remaining staff parking would be below grade, um, you know, so that they would park, you know, sort of out of, the, <clears throat> out of the weather, out of the climate, and then, you know, be able to go to the building. Um, and so I think as we progress, we just have to keep that in mind. I think it's something that we might have not been as clear as we thought we were. Okay. Yeah. So. yeah I mean, I, I suppose you know it's cost related. You know, but but you, you you could come down and put another level underneath that. And you know what we had done, which again it was, it was you know, here we're parking underneath the building, and this was an alternate. I said okay, if we want. You know, another group of spaces we could do that, but that would be it wouldn't be underneath the building. So, so you know that that you know with the waterproofing and and, and creating a, an attractive surface on top, you know, gets to be uh, you know it's, it's a little bit more difficult than more underneath the building. But um, yeah, I think maybe we misinterpreted. That. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to I'm going to jump on a sequence here if you don't mind, and we'll go because <coughs> another question I have kind of associated with that really is that. I don't believe I saw um, a different financial stacking for adding that underground parking. You mentioned it, and you mentioned the numbers would be adjusted, but I don't think there was a resolution. Have you thought about that any further? Or? No, if the town so desires completely underground, we have we, we would have to fight for that. Okay. Because I, if I recall in the RFP, the town said they, they may help out. Here. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, we're we're willing to participate. The, the town's willing to participate. Financially, to an extent, of course, that makes sense for everybody, right? Um, but there's a very strong desire, a very strong push by the community in the town, and this committee, quite frankly, has had as little as surface parking as possible. So I think at the end of the day, we want to understand what that means, impact-wise, you know, financially. Um, to guide either more units, either more free space, 
motivated for the staff. Um, you know, so so just saying, I think what I'm hearing you willing to entertain that. Sort of just need to do it now that it's open. So, thank you. And part of that would be, and, and we addressed this, so I, I don't really have a question to this, but a comment on looking at some residential parking too for residents. So, you know, underground. So we were looking at, you know, the fact that, um, you know, the public, excuse me. So some parking for the rest of the Board of Ag, for the <coughs> residents, and then for some public parking because we're very short on parking, um, but have it hidden away. Um, rather than, um, you know, a block top. I want to clarify for the townhouses, where do the residents of the townhouse park? On the street? Or they, no, they have, a, they, they have a, a one car garage and a surface space, and each has oh, two right. spaces. So that's behind. Behind. Okay. okay. That not facing the street. Okay. Right. Okay. That wasn't clear. Okay. Great. George, I think you're next. Hi. Hi. So, uh, what are the projections of rent and expense based upon? Based on uh, forestry. Hmm? Forest, sorry. What are the rents based on? Yeah, what, like how did you calculate? Like what, what did you? We use their comps. We use their comps. Okay. Yeah. Whose comps? I'm sorry. Forest, Forest City. Forest City. Forest City. And the same on the expenses as well? I don't, I have apartment buildings, so I just use my experience in that. I don't know their expenses. Thank you. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your financial stacking for this project and how does it include in uh, public, uh, public dollars uh, should you envision it? As of right now, no public dollars, nothing from the town. But again, if we start doing more underground uh, parking, perhaps, um, Affordable. If we go a lot of affordable, we may start looking at a lower purchase price and maybe some tax abatements. So as of right now, all private financing for <coughs> bank, the current bank account. and private. Yes. Yep. Uh, just for you know comparison uh, sake and asking because we have the other two um, you know people who are going to be to let us know what the rents will be like. Yes, I can tell you. We figured it. a one bedroom at uh, eighteen hundred. I'm sorry, a studio at eighteen hundred, a one bedroom at two thousand, a two bedroom at twenty four fifty, and the townhouse is at twenty nine hundred. is on the 952 East Broadway property, uh, the neighboring property. Do you envision any concept for that? And how are you complementing sports development? That would be the one on the corner that's not available at this yes. time? Mm -hmm. Well, there's not much we, we didn't consider it yet because we don't know if it's available. We don't, we're in the dark on that one. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the copper one? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not here. I mean, that would be a great thing. office attorney's office or something. Mm -hmm. And um, do you plan on keeping the property yes. long term? Yes. This is a question that you made. I, it was something I read and as I was going through the notes before you came on. I honestly don't remember what it was, but there was something that suggested that you would be flipping the project. The project. No. Oh, I, I think I think that's in what I prepared. <clears throat> it meant that it's an, it's foreseeable that Mark is not going to own this property forever. Um, I mean, eventually, your family's not going to you're not going to be around. Um, so successors means that we're we're, we're ex explaining that any duties and responsibilities that Mark's agreeing to maintain will continue, and it, it will it will be restricted or it be be put upon any successor, whenever that might be, to maintain. It the also it also parking. we will. If we go forward with this project, we'll start a new company, which sole purpose entity. Sole purpose, which my partner would have to be part of. Okay. So if that's 
if it can be transferred to that, my other company, that's what it is, or the new company, like I know, or the cover system to do that. So, I don't know if I've seen much on this in the proposal, it does mention it. Um, do we have an on-site property manager? Yes. Or? TOD, as you know, Ray, and I'm sure you do, Mark, the plan is a multi-use, right? Whether it's a retail office, residential, whatever the case may be, you chose to keep, keep that mixed use out. Can you just explain your rationale why you did that? Yes. We didn't want to compete with all the other retail and other buildings in that shopping center behind us. I don't think, this day and age, retail is difficult to rent, uh, they take up more parking, they need to do more parking. Um, we have a perfect downtown to, to take advantage of. I don't, I, we didn't want to add, add anything else, just put more residents in that area. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to add to that, as a long-term kind of resident of Stratford, I know that area very very yeah. well. And Watch it flood several times. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's had a major flooding over the years, but um, hence the high water table, hence yeah. not putting a garage below the garage. Okay? Yeah. I think that's inviting a disaster. But um, I don't, as a, as a citizen, I don't see that location, the, the, the location being appropriate for mixed use. I just don't see businesses wanting to go there. I don't see people being attracted to the building. Uh, we think it would be an unproductive space. I mean, granted, we, we could apply for tax abatements and that would be the incentive for that. But what's the point of a tax abatement, abatement if the property is not productive? It doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, is there anything else? Larry? Anybody? Okay. Alright, I'm good. Thank you. Do you folks have any questions or less? Uh, I don't I don't think we have any questions for the committee. By the way, thank you for the for the time on the committee. I know it's volunteer for the most part. You, you, know, you want to thank you. You guys did a, a good job. It looks like you know, obviously you put a lot of time into it, so we thank you for that. And, uh, I took it I took it very seriously. I hired the best guys. You can tell well, I'm off that. <laughs> Talking about y'all, get close. Get close, Bill's going up. Thanks again. Appreciate Thank you. Thanks for leaving your. Uh, I'm hitting high speed now. I'm on my way. So I forgot to get back up to him. Do you want to take this back?